Americans. I'm sure they're fine. Yeah. I'm sure they're fine. You know, they're probably great. Right, guys? I'm Ryan. And I'm Steven. This is 60 Cycle Hunting Guitar, buying, selling, trading, modding, fixing, breaking, reviewing, playing, helmet wearing. Oh my gosh. Podcast. <laughs> I've lost. Okay, here it is. I'll read it. Uh, at 60 Cycle Hum. I hope 60 Cycle Hum keeps commenting. I had no idea how emotionally codependent the shepherd, in air quotes, was. Low. So Mr. Hum doesn't have the credibility to get a quality gear manufacturer to send him decent gear to review. So he reviews crap to cater to the helmet wearing losers that follow him. That's the basis of your little YouTube channel, crap gear for losers while you emotionally support each other. You're absolutely right, Mr. Hum. Keep the dialogue going. You can't find this level of stupid on any of the other channels doing gear demos. Let's keep it going, genius. <laughs> You know, the more I think about it, is is calling you stupid actually an insult? Like, it's like the whole thing. I uh, I'm trying to figure out. Yeah, you know, I'll just put it. You know, it's like Tim and Eric have. I I don't I don't know a lot about Tim and Eric. Okay, I know they were a thing. They're still a thing. They're still a thing. Apparently, <laughs> they still um, exist. They're guys. And their stuff is is very stupid, and it's very stupid on purpose. And saying, "Hey, Tim and Eric, the your style of comedy is stupid," is kind of like, yeah, we it, know. It's it's <laughs> kind of like, uh, oh, thank you, right? Oh, you noticed, thank yeah. you. Uh, so, right? Are you having a good time reviewing bad stuff? Uh, yeah, like it's yeah, kind of interesting. Yeah, kind of like this, it a lot. Stuff. Oh, you're you're stupid. That's stupid. Okay, cool, I guess. So, to catch everyone up who has no idea what's going on, um, I published a video like two weeks ago, probably two and a half weeks ago at the point that this airs, and uh, it really blew up in a way that I was not expecting at all. Like, my videos tend to cap out, no. like, top end, like, 30,000. Normal is, like, 7,000 to, like, 15,000. This, this says your typical views is 5.2 to 14. K. Yeah, that, that tracks. Um, so, like you said, about, you know, 7 to right. 15. So, this really took off. Last I checked, it was, like, 127,000 yeah, views. 127. And when you get a video that takes off like that, and you weren't expecting it, it means it's getting pushed to a whole new audience. And uh, when you get a whole new audience, you get people who don't know what you're all about or uh, they get angry about what they're <laughs> what they're viewing and they have all sorts of uh, big opinions to share with you. And, you know, there's a lot of people who wanted us in this episode to talk about the subject of that video, which is uh, Zouai, Zouai guitars. Zouai. Zouai. Gosh, Ryan, you're saying it wrong on purpose. I know, but now I second guess myself. You're saying, why. you're saying this wrong on purpose because you want children to lose Christmas. Oh gosh, shut up. <laughs> so anyways, people want us to talk about that, about that guitar and about, you know, some of the drama around it. What I'm going to say about that is that it's all still developing and uh, I'm not ready to put a, a retrospective, you know, kind of explanation on the whole thing. On it yet? We'll see how it all develops. Um, that might take a couple of weeks. Who knows? Um, it might never be like resolved. But anyways, we can still read comments <laughs> from this crazy like thousand plus comment thread that is on that video and kind of try to like suss them out and make sense of them. Um, this this one has. Like, I'm going to make a shirt based around this. There's, you know, <laughs> there's part of it that I absolutely despise that I hate. The the whole helmet thing is disgusting. Like, he's trying to he's trying to make a stab at, you know, people who need to wear helmets for medical reasons to protect their noggins. And that's just cruel. I, I, I can't get behind that at all. And I don't think that's funny. But a lot of this is funny. <laughs> well, what's also like wild and it's not even there's like you know um 
There's some questions about whether or not some of the comments were sock puppet accounts. I personally don't think they were necessarily sock puppet accounts because some of the some of these accounts were like arguing with each other. Right. So it's like you, if this is a sock puppet, this is the well, you know, best sock puppet. If you're doing puppets, you've got two hands, Steve. I you can guess. do two. No, I I honestly have no idea. But they did all seem to cool off and stop being so chatty around the same day, which was weird. <laughs> like today's the first day where none of these really angsty, upset accounts have been commenting on that video. And maybe just everyone's over it, which is fine. And now here we are talking about it. Yeah. Um, oh, but here, here. but like the, the, the angst and like just how upset some of these commenters were when the, the, the normal commenters that are, you know, in our normal comment section are like, what is going on with these people mm -hmm. was over the top. Um, I, I just want to say that the, the comment that we read at the beginning here, I'm definitely going to make a shirt design out of this and I'll publish the, uh, the red, uh, the editing Ryan shirt at the same time when I get around to this, but I'm going to have a shirt that says Mr. Hums, Crap gear for losers, emotional support group, or something like that. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. come up with some sort of fun, like vintage style design for that, and I, I'm gonna wear it. How do you? Because I love that. I think that's. I think that's a really fun way to like sum up our community. There was one commenter who wanted to compare you to uh, Pete Thorne. Said Pete would Why? not. Pete would not stoop to this level of internet tomfoolery. Oh Why? no! Somebody was saying like that. Uh, this other guy. This guy who was a saying that uh, Pete Thorne wouldn't make a video like this. And then someone was saying, like, you're a Pete Thorne sock puppet account. It's like, <laughs> yeah, no, like Pete Thorne's making sock puppet accounts to, like, say what Pete Thorne would or wouldn't yeah. do. Pretty sure Pete Thorne is very busy being a very talented musician and doesn't need a check-in on my channel ever. Like, but ever. Then, but then some, okay, so some of the comments on here, like, so this guy says, these idiots don't get it. It's not about the negative review nearly as much as how it was done and the product it was done on. Even if Pete likes a product, if he doesn't think the product has consistent QC, then he won't even review. This is a guy who was saying like, oh, sure. Pete Thorne's better. Like, I don't I don't watch a lot of gear YouTube, there, so I can tell you. For obvious reasons, this guy just wanted a cheap view count based on sheer negativity. Oh gosh. We knew how this guy felt about the guitar before he even knew what the guitar was. Pete... <laughs> nor any other credible reviewer wouldn't have pulled a stunt like that. Well, I guess he's he's saying that because the title reveals like yeah. it's not going to be a great guitar, which is true. Come on. Why won't it let me get to the comment section of this video? I'm just, oh, there it is. I just kind of okay. look at it and I go like, I feel like if you could guarantee every negative video you did would get like, 125,000 I mean, views. Could, I could make every single video have the same kind of thumbnail and title. We're like, is this the worst reverb pedal ever made? Like, is this the worst amp ever made? And it would like, I made that the title because I still legitimately believe that that's the worst guitar I've ever been sent by a company. Like the company said that I like, it wasn't sent by a, a viewer that was like, check out this wild thing. It wasn't, I didn't buy it. Cause I, you know, saw it and I was like, Oh, I want to try that. Like it was, that guitar was sent to me and that's still baffling to me in so many ways. And I still, I still stand by the title. I still stand by the clickbait. Well, and for what it's worth, like granted you didn't initially put the brand in there, but there are Pete Thorne titles. Like this pedal sounds totally outrageous. Right. Right. You know, no, he's not innocent of simple, baiting. programmable, incredible. You know, and, and again, then he says what the brand is. Oh, great acoustic sub one thousand dollars, Court Gold A six. Courts are usually pretty good, but that that's a cheap yeah. import. You know, brand. You know, I don't. Remember. I'm not. I'm not trying to dig on Pete. I'm saying sure, sure. I, I think no. He knows. He knows how to make a, a title yeah. that's going to get you to yeah. click. Like that's you know that's part of the business. You have can, to have a title that can make you this click. replace all of your drive boxes. <laughs> Is the answer going to be no? No. <laughs> like th th there's some rule out there. I forget what it is. But the rule is if you ask a question in a title, the answer is almost always yes. Oh, I really wanted to know if that was the worst. Sorry, my cable's dragging. If that was the worst guitar. It's not the worst guitar I think I've ever tried out. Um, it's close. I think the Mahar was pretty bad. You remember the Mahar? Yeah. 
Um, but that wasn't sent to me by the brand. I don't think the brand even exists enough to send right, people right. things like this. This brand, the 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 Chinese representatives of the brand, there are multiples of them that emailed us asking us to cover it. The one that I replied to, well, I replied to all of them, like sending them my rates. The one that finally like convinced me to receive the guitar, like essentially begged. Mm-hmm. Like essentially, and Steve read the email. He he knows what I'm saying. Oh yeah, like yeah. essentially begged for me to cover this guitar, and then they sent a guitar that like the qualities of it are, are baffling to me. And so the whole thing is just like so perplexing to me. I don't remember my thinking of why I didn't include the name of the brand in the title or the thumbnail. Um, I I'm assuming I wanted it to be a mystery. Like, oh, find out which brand this is. I ended up changing the title to say the brand name because a couple people pointed out and I started to think about it enough and be like, okay, they have a point that a lot of people were clicking the video because they assumed it was a, a Charvel. Charvel. Yeah. yeah. And I, I, you know, that wasn't my intention. Because it's definitely in that style. That wasn't my uh, intention to like, to trick people that way. I understand that people were tricked. I'm sorry. That wasn't my intention. I'm sure lots of people won't believe me, but whatever. There, there's a couple people who are calling you Mr. Hum, which is, you know, does that mean they're all the same person? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I, uh, I kind of like it. I've never had a good nickname. Uh, so maybe Mr. Hum will be my nickname. Lol. Oh, oh. This is one of the same. This might be the same person you read earlier. Tell you what, Mr. Hum. If you're that triggered over getting called out for a tasteless review, you'd be better off removing the entire review. We've, we've talked about this before. Oh, I'm surprised that you're letting this cheap piece of junk destroy what credibility you do have. Do you have credibility? <laughs> it's news to me. <laughs> uh, no one no one will remember the name of some cheap generic guitar, but I guarantee you they'll remember the name of the dude who is so fragile, insecure, and hypocritical Oh, this is the person who thought that you deleted like 200 comments. No, no. Uh, that he couldn't take someone critiquing him to the point of deleting comments. Whose fault is it that you have idiots following you? Well, it's their fault. It's your fault that you're following us. It's your fault. Idiots, come to me. <laughs> it's your fault. I, <laughs> I, I will lead you into the idiot wasteland and we will be happy together. <laughs> Oh man, it it was a particularly clickbaity title, but you know uh, that's the business I'm in. I need business. I need clicks. Like I, if you see a video and the title, and you're like, oh, I'm not interested in that. And they're like, why even make the video? Because no one's gonna watch it. Like I need I need the clicks. I really do. I, I really want. Okay, so so all but of I this. do. I to, okay, I'm gonna rant on this for a second, and Go then. Ahead. I'll I'm not going to listen. Um, people say clickbait. Hold on. I like, took my headphones off. I can't hear you now. <laughs> people say clickbait like, oh, no, he's baited my click. In my mind, the bad kind of clickbait is when you're given a title or you're given a tease of something and it doesn't deliver on that promise. You get to the end of the video or the article or whatever, and you're like, oh, it didn't really have anything to do with the title. I really try hard not to do that. Like I want the title to be short and sweet and to, to bring you in, but still deliver, you know, the premise of the video. Yeah. And, and at the end of the day, like the clickbait titles, if your video is sufficiently long and uh, so, okay, hold on. I, I need to make an outline. Somebody told me I need to outline my thoughts. Oh my so hold on. If outlining, you don't do this well, Steve, outlining. Emily's going to replace yeah, you. Emily's going to replace me. Um, so so the thought that I have is I don't even know. I, I know clickbait titles is just this title got you to click on this. But the whole thing with the classic clickbait article is that it's usually actually like 10 different pages Right. That each have like one paragraph on it. So if you just have one video with dozens of ads in between with, with a bunch of ads in it or one video that is just 12 minutes long and it did address like yes or no, like it's a different kind of clickbait, but I don't think of it as being like as nefarious. Like I published, like, I published that the, the cattle and bread uh, cloak video today. Mm-hmm. Does it doom? And the title is, is this a doom? Oh, yeah. yeah. And that content is in there at the end, near the end of the video, I start laying in like heavy fuzz and then I bring in the baritone and it's like, yeah, 
this is a doom reverb, but that content is in there. You have to get through the first, you know, 15 minutes to get to it. You don't, right? So you can this jump is why to the it's end. not. You can you can, you can just jump click around end. and find the part that you want. I do this all the time on right. your videos. You're really annoying. <laughs> uh, no, but I, I mean I do this all the time on YouTube where it's like so, especially like a lot of. Uh, I really like David Bennett uh, music. David Bennett pianos. He does a he does a lot of music theory stuff mm-hmm. uh, on like pop music, and I really like his channel. Uh, but usually there's somewhere whenever I'm watching one of his videos, if I'm actually paying attention to it, that's like. Let's st- let's stop for a moment and talk about Skillshare. And I go back to the video and I just hit like forward like three times and I'm back in the video. Like you can do that. You can do that. You don't have to watch the whole thing. Right, right. Anyway, uh, I'm I have a fear that this could turn into the Charlie Day always sunny meme, the conspiracy theory meme. Um, right. Like but, connect, connecting photos and bits of paper with, with yarn and stuff yeah, like that. But, but one of the things that I think w- this video highlighted more than uh, this comes up every few years. This came up a few years ago with, with Wong Wong's amplifiers mm-hmm. where there are certain companies that employ, uh, they employ or they get involved somehow with, uh, Americans or English speak. I won't even say Americans, but people who speak English. Mm-hmm. Usually, they're in the United States somewhere. They get in, they they get connected with Western representatives. Yes, yeah. and, and uh, these people become the you know brand representative for a region that's usually like North America and sometimes North America and Europe. Sure. And I, and I don't. And so this is the thing that I don't understand is how these people get involved in this business. Like, do they reach out to? The company and say, hey, I really like your product. I wish there were more of them in the United States. How can I help you? Or, you know, what what is that relationship? That's the thing I genuinely want to sure. know. Well, like I I mean, you already know this. I I have for I've had for a couple of weeks now a open invitation to the representative, the US representative yeah. of this yeah. brand to do a live video with me. And like I, I'm very curious about that side of the business. Like how does this all work? How did you get connected with this brand? Like, like, uh, you know, I want to find out what, what it is about these kinds of arrangements. Like, how do they happen? Are they attractive? Like, do they pay off? Yeah, like, is yeah. it like, what are the mechanics of it? Like, cause it is, it is all very interesting and it seems to lead to dramatic interactions from Here, time to time. Here's the thing that I want to know. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, some people might say it's not. This isn't fair because I'm looking for more comments. I've never, uh, I've never hit up uh, Martin. I don't know if I can say that. Who's a brand representative for a company we work with? I'll just leave okay. it like that uh, since I don't know yeah. if he's supposed to exist. Uh, and I've never, he's supposed to exist. You're just not supposed to say his name or the company name at the same time, Steve. So don't say the company name, okay. and it won't be a problem. So, uh, so he represents a, a company. And I've never thought to him or any of the other brand representatives to be like, hey, man, how much do you guys sell these for to, to like, I know how much it's going to cost in the store. We usually talk about the price of their products when we, sure. when we promote them. Uh, how much do you sell these for? You know, I think it's forgotten a lot of the time when uh, you buy a Gibson at Guitar Center or, or from Sweetwater, you know, you buy a JHS pedal from Sweetwater and you pay 175 bucks for the pedal. Sweetwater didn't buy that pedal for 175 no, bucks. No. They probably bought that pedal for like 75 bucks. From I, what you know, I don't know. It's like somewhere in that range, from, right? From what I've come to understand, and I'm sure it's not the same all the time. Mm-hmm. I'm sure it fluctuate, fluctuates back and forth. But if a retailer is selling your product and you're a small builder, uh, you are basically splitting the profit with the retailer 50, 50, like right. you're not splitting you, you, your, you, your costs that they're buying from you covers the production costs, mm-hmm. but the profit margin on that product is being split 50, 50 with the retailer, which is, that's pretty standard. So like, say you make, say you make a pedal that sells for $200. It costs you a hundred dollars to make it. This is all 
speculative. It's just example numbers. It costs you $100 to make it. That means you're selling it to them for 150 okay. and they're profiting yeah. 50. So you're profiting 50, they're profiting 50. Yeah, and, and so I think presumably, you know, that type of same type of relationship would exist with these import companies, sure. you know. And I think where where it gets weird is with all with these companies, these people that represent them very often they they almost have like an MLM approach in the way that they use their language that I think as a, as a skeptic, as a person who views that stuff, it's, you know, it's, they, they do try to present themselves as company owners yeah, when as, they, as when a, often they are, uh, distributors. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with, and they're not even, no, like, no. they're not even like straight distributors. And, and so that's the other thing that's interesting is a lot of the time they say like, we're going to cut the middle, we're cutting out the middleman. And usually the middleman is Amazon sure, or, uh, you know, maybe some of these brands, there used to be a brand at the, we, we talked about guitar shops last week. Uh, there used to be a brand called Sunlight that was like a real, that was like the cheap. Right, like right. Sunlight. They'd and, sell like yeah, classical guitars yeah, and I think, small I think Sunlight and acoustics and, and ukuleles. I think I had a Sunlight ukulele. I think Sunlight and Rogue were like part of the same company for a while. Probably, probably. Or being manufactured by and distributed by the same folks. Uh, and so you'd go there and... Um, I lost my train of thought. I should have I should have made an outline. Steve, uh, you forgot your outlines for this discussion that we're having. So okay, so the, you have this brand and, and it's cheap and whatever, and it's like so you're selling it as a store or as the individual or whatever. Like you don't own that brand, right? You're, you now you're the middleman. Like it doesn't matter that like whether it's a store or whatever. Like if you if you are buying it from a factory, even if you're buying it really cheap and then you're reselling it for a different price. Sure. Even if it's a price you agreed to with the factory, like that anytime you're not buying it directly from the factory, you're the middleman. Now, maybe in this particular agreement that we're talking about where the person says, well, you that, mean, you mean if you're, if you buy it direct from the factory and then you sell it, you are the middleman. If you buy it direct from the factory and you're the end user, there is no middleman. Right. 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 So, and, and you know, distribution models vary. So we have a firefly over here. The way that Firefly presents itself is I don't really understand their model. They don't, I haven't really cared to figure out their model, but they present themselves as if when you buy a Firefly from Guitars Garden right. their website, uh, that you are basically buying it direct from the factory. Right. It's like a factory direct wholesale sort of yeah. concept. And, you know, maybe that is why they can sell them to for 200 bucks. Yeah. When there's, other brands that are essentially selling this guitar for more. And you can tell that it is the same guitar. I might be looking at one right over there. <laughs> like there's little details that have changed, but you can tell like it came from the same place. Yeah. But well, and even though the one, the other one that's over there and we won't bring it out because I, you know, I understand why you're being, Oh, I don't want, yeah. I don't want to drag anyone, but anyone uh, well, who's, who's watched the videos <laughs> can figure it out. I don't think it's a drag necessarily, but you know, I, sure. I don't think of buying. So the factory, if they're, the, they're an OEM, I don't think you have to be buying OEM to say you've eliminated the middleman. I think it, if you're buying from the company that's contracting the OEM work, then you've a, effectively eliminated the middleman. If you are, because they're at least, they are paying for the build process. Okay. Maybe they're not building it themselves, but they're paying for the build process. So that's where, you know, when these companies say we're eliminating the middleman or whatever, like Bendy, what I don't think was a middleman. Maybe he was. Right. Maybe I don't think he was buying them and then reselling them. I think he was just given a small when he stock. Says Bendy, this, that was the name that uh, the guy who is yeah. the, the yeah. Wong's, Wang's uh, he was, US he rep. Was the Wong's US rep. That was rep. the name he used to go by. That's not a nickname we chose for him. That, that you know, his, his, his name was yeah. Bendy Benzalot. Yeah. 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 Uh, and, uh, and so I think he, I, and I don't, I didn't really understand how his model worked. And so I, I'm, I'd like to know how that model works. I sure. think it's interesting. And, and part, partially also because, I mean, there, it, you know, there might be, a career for a listener waiting yeah. out there. Like you find some import brand that you believe in or that you want to work with and you want to put in the time to be the U S face of that company. Maybe it's a good business. Yeah. It seems I like a lot no of people idea. are doing it. I'd love to know how it all works. And, uh, and so the other part of that is, uh, I don't know how it works with the guitars, the factory that, uh, we found that per, at least is a one guitar manufacturer or runs a factory that I sounds like, is 
produces a lot of guitars. Uh, their minimum order is six. Now, I don't know if that's like six of their branded guitars or it's like if you buy at least six, then you can send them graphic design and like basically as long as you've agreed to six, like they'll they'll slap your graphic design on it. I don't, Only I don't, six? Yeah, I, and I don't know how that works. I know when we've looked into pedals, people we've talked to who know how the import pedal business works, Yeah, uh, you know, uh, I don't know if Rowan is the parent, but basically like Donner, Rowan. It's impossible uh, to figure out brands. who like the, the parent brand yeah. of all they're, these companies. They're all is. coming from the same little pedal factory, but every the people that we've talked to at least have said that you have to order like at least like a quarter of a shipping crates worth of guitar pedals to get like the best price. Right. And then, you know, if you're ordering six guitars with your brand name on it, you're, you're probably ordering at sample that's, rates. That's true. Like you're paying close. You might even be paying above what you'd hope to sell them yeah. at market for. Oh yeah. That, but that's fair. That's I mean, fair. if we could maybe you do more come up with a design that we wanted and order six of them, <laughs> Like that could be a fun thing, but then you get into the thing of like you have to receive it. You're you're sure. going to be responsible for making it good, right? With the pedals, you assume the pedals are good, uh, but you know, like I said, a quarter of a shipping crate. It was something like I think 500 pedals was the minimum order. So when uh, you know, you you touted the Cuvave fuzz for a right. long time, which there's speculation about what Amazon fuzz is the, actually the same circuit now under a different brand, possibly. Right. Um, but, uh, you know, as much as, as popular as that series was for you, I don't think we could get 500 of them and sell them. No. And it'd be so much work. If, if we, you could order like 50 of them, like 50, 60 cycle home branded Kuvave fuzzes, you could probably sell After those. all the shipping that you've done with the Azores, do you want to go down that road? I don't. I'm saying if I'm saying assuming like you'd have to figure out what the rates are, but if it was a pedal right, that right. we were getting for for ten dollars a piece and selling for fifty dollars a piece, then or forty fifty dollars a piece, yes. then maybe it's worth it. You know? Yeah, it's not it, the kind of work that I want to do. No, it's I, it's not. I'm not saying you want to do it. Right, I'm just right. saying these are the kind of numbers. So I want to circle back to. You got some more comments? Did you find a comment? No, I didn't. I want to circle oh. back to to you know a concept that was in one of the comments that we started this off with. Uh, the person saying like, "Oh, Pete Thorne would never do a video like oh, this." Oh yeah. There's a lot of demo channels that they won't do negative videos. Mm -hmm. They won't, you know, they won't cover a product that they think is bad, even to say like this is bad. That's not me. That's not what I do. Like I have a long, you know, history of videos where I react to products as I unbox them. And then I make decisions like, oh, is this good or bad? Like the affordable board series is all that. I have dozens and dozens of videos of me, you know, basically performing triage on whole groups of products to figure out what I like, what I can recommend, and what I can't recommend. It's part of the brand of the channel. It really yeah. is. And when people come in like, oh, these other channels do it this way, so you should be doing it this way because, you know, they're, you know, the definition of, of, of what, you know, guitar YouTube videos should be. No. There's, there's room to do things all sorts of different ways. Yeah. And honestly, the affordable board stuff, the cheap guitar stuff, kind of gets back to where we started it's probably close to, you know and, and it's funny because yeah, it's at, it's at because, the core of our personality behind the show for you sure know, I, I know for a few years like a lot of people complained oh he's only it seems like he's only doing walrus audio demos these days so much for buying finding great deals on craigslist just right. go buy it full price at sweetwater Ugh. and like you know going back to the affordable board thing in my mind the function of the affordable board series and, you know, spinoffs of Forta Stratus, Forta Amp, if I even, you know, develop those anymore. Um, Forta Telly. Is, yeah, I'm sorting through all these, you know, cheap import pedals that are of dubious qualities and stuff like that. And people are like, oh, you're encouraging people to buy all this crap and it's just going to put more waste into the environment and blah, 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 and more junk on shelves. Like, no, I'm sorting through the crap. <laughs> And I'm helping prevent people from buying 
85, 90% of it. You're actually saving the environment. To keep, to keep them from going like, oh man, that, you know, that delay must be just as good as any other delay. I'll buy it. They could go watch one of my videos and be like, ah, uh, you know, it's really not that great. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like, oh, but he's, oh, or this one that he just showed, like that one I connect with, you know, he's, he's sussed out which ones are the cream of the crop and which ones are worth actually looking into. And the whole rest of them, hopefully, if people hear that they're not worth buying, they'll stop buying them. And those products won't be put on the market again. And these poor quality products won't be put on the market again. Like, you know, the, the example of that orange guitar. Mm-hmm. If I didn't publish that video, in theory, people could keep buying that guitar indefinitely and not have enough warning, not, you know, receive information that a guitar of that quality could show up. Yeah. And I know not every guitar of that model from that factory, from that brand will show up that way. I know that we all know that, mm-hmm. but the fact that they are shipping out guitars that have those issues is something worth documenting and something worth displaying to an audience so that they know that that is a possibility. And if the brand takes it the right way, they will prevent guitars of that build quality from leaving the factory in the first place. Why should they spend money shipping that when it's only going to ruin their chances of sales in the future? Like this is, this is like, this is base level capitalism (laughs) of like, Hey, well, that's your problem, Ryan. It's capitalism. <laughs> it's the capitalism is the problem. <laughs> um, well, and so speaking to that, uh, not to, well, to uh, capitalism. This is base level, like free market deciding, guys. Yeah, and, and honestly, like, again, talking about other budget brands that you've covered, in the case of this orange guitar, I think pretty much everybody looked at the nut and was like, wow, that's bad. Right. Most of the other things that you said, like, Oh, yeah. A lot like of it this, makes like that. a lot of it makes sense for a two hundred dollar price. This guitar. isn't this isn't you know whatever. There were a lot of people in the comments who said like, yeah, I think I could fix that. Sure. And just like you know, you we've brought in other uh, guitars that you, where you said, you know, one out of the twenty two frets is dead. Like fret sixteen is dead. Right. It's weird. So if you're me, I don't. I'm not really allowed to play above the fourteenth fret anyway. <laughs> So it's not really a problem. Right, right. If you're a lot of the people, other people who subscribe to the channel, they go like, you know, I've been looking at that brand. Oh, dead one dead fret. Like I've got a mallet. I can fix that. Like no, and there's, I got it, a mallet and a two by four. I can fix that. And that's so much fun. So that's so much of the fun of these videos and having a channel like this is that you present a problem and then you get to see the audience like, like, oh, this is how you fix that. Or this is how I would fix that. Or like, oh, I just wouldn't buy that. Or, oh, I would totally buy that. And I've got an idea for a project for that. Like, I love that dynamic. I I absolutely do. One of the things that you and I disagree on uh, going going back years. And so one of the things you frequently point out in these videos is one of the common things with import guitars is that they have microphonic pickups. Mm. Uh, and I, and it's not just you. It's uh, there is a guitar that you used to own that I really loved, and then uh, I don't remember who you sold it to, but you sold it to somebody. And you, I remember you saying like, "Oh, the pickups in it are kind of microphonic." And I've heard other people who have owned the same model of guitar with the same model pickups in it make the same comment like, "Oh, yeah, it's a cool guitar, but you know." Are we talking about the Roni? We're talking about the Roni. Okay. Pickup pickups in it are microphonic. We're talking about what it's like having a Roni. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's a vanilla ice joke guys. Oh my gosh. Uh, how old are you? Are you old enough to get that joke? I'm not. I am. Uh, so Cole, I think it's Cole Duke over at the gear slump said the same thing that the pickups in his right. are microphonic. It's not it by design the, I think they're, I want to say they're righteous sound pickups. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're, they're just designed to be like an old school 50s, 60s humbugger. Yeah. So they're a little microphonic. I really liked that sound. The, hmm. Those that was one of the. No, I thought the pickups sounded great. Yeah, but, but and, and so the fact if you're that they doing, were a little microphonic to me was kind of a perk. If you're doing high gain at stage volumes, it's annoying. If you're playing at home and recording with it, it's it doesn't matter. What if you're playing high gain but it, it's direct? If there's an if there's an audio signal loud enough that it can get to the guitar, then it will feedback. 
So if you've got a stage monitor or house speakers or something like that. You know what, though? You, okay, so not, not uh, you're, I hear you. Uh-huh. I hear you. Uh, and maybe I wasn't running high gain enough. That's Paul. Uh, no, I think I was because I was using a rat. Uh, I was using a woodcutter, actually. Um, so I think it was high gain enough. Uh, but I pretty much, I like harnessed that. Sure. I, I wanted that, that little bit of a squeal. Well, it's different. It, it made it made getting that like kind of like harmonic on the band a little easier. Well, I, I published a video last week with that Firefly where I took the covers off of the humbuckers to try to get rid of that, that microphonic feedback. Yeah. And as I was doing it, because I took it off the bridge and then I took it off the neck, as I was doing the neck, I was like, I should have left one because then I could stutter back and forth and have like a squeaky noise, like sound effect that I could work in. So I feel like this has kind of gone all over the place. Let's do an ad. The comments are are whatever. You guys just... (laughs) Any the the ones that are the funniest to me are the ones that are assuming that either uh, myself or you are getting upset and are getting you know, like butt hurt or whatever. And sincerely, what I want everyone to imagine because it is the the God's honest truth: when Steve and I are dealing with trolls or dealing with negative comments or whatever in videos, wherever we are on social media. It is not a situation where we're butt hurt and we're angry and we're upset. It is a Bugs Bunny versus Yosemite Sam situation. <laughs> and we're Bugs Bunny. Like, we're like, ain't I a little stinker? We're going to get this guy angry. Like, the, uh, that, the, is, that is the energy. Preferably, <laughs> preferably red lipstick, tight dress, Bugs Bunny. <laughs> Oh, absolutely. Like Bugs Bunny is definitely like our spirit animal when it comes a literal animal when it oh comes gosh. to how we deal with, you know, the drama in our comment section. All right. This ad was sent by Mark de Bruin. <laughs> you like how I spelled his last name? This is a guitar pick. Yeah, it is. It's not just a guitar pick. It's Steve. from Stevie Ray Vogan. Vog, Vog, Voghan. 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 St- Stevie Raymond Voghan. Stephen Raymond Voghan. Uh, this is Off Helen of Verzetten. I don't know what that means. Uh, here's a guitar pick apparently used by Stevie Ray Vaughan. It's one of those ads where the seller thinks that the item needs no explanation. It doesn't state whether SRV actually used this pick or when and where he did or how it got into the position, possession of the seller. He doesn't even mention that you can recognize picks used by SRV because he played with a thick edge instead of the point. I know that because, yes, there's an online SR. There's a Steve Ravon pick museum. That's oh, my SRV. gosh. Uh, so I don't you, I don't doubt for a second that that exists, but I'm also, like, a little bit grossed out that that exists. I mean, it's fine to be a Steve Ravon fan, but, like, that level of fandom is kind of gross, I right? I see these pictures of Pick these museum, guys. A Steve Ravon pick museum. You know, if it was a Dick Dale pick museum, I wouldn't flinch. So that's on me. That's that's the darkness in my heart, guys. <laughs> Is that I'm I'm making that judgment because it's not someone that I'm necessarily a fan of. So I'm looking at these picks, and I'm actually sur- kind of surprised that Stevie Ray Vaughan used picks that had his own name on them. Well, you know, he needs to make sure that they're his. He's like, he doesn't want to pick up a random pick and be like, oh, that's not my pick. Sorry. But I'm saying like, he, so even he, he these- probably, he probably has the same company print his name on his underwear. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you think about it, a pick is a gross thing and you kind of don't want other people to touch it and you don't want to touch other people's picks. Like it's been in their mouth. It's been in their pocket. They've been sweating all over it. I guess a lot, a, a pick is a lot like underwear. If we're honest. They're dirty. <laughs> Somewhere I've got a Carol Kay guitar pick. I had a pick that I caught out of the air at a presidency of the United States of America concert. Mm-hmm. Chris Ballou flicked it into the crowd. I didn't catch it out of the air. It hit the ground, but I picked it up. Oh, yeah. and I, kept, I think I was there. I kept it in my wallet. And then one day... I was like, oh, I didn't need a pick. Oh, here, I play this pick. And then I lost it because I was like, I forgot where it came from. It's not like it matters. It's not like, you know, Chris Ballou is, you know, a virtuoso guitarist and that pick would be worth anything. And it didn't say PUSA on it. It was just a Tortex. 
It said, return this pick to Chris Ballou for a reward of $40,000. Submit this pick to the Chris Ballou Museum. <laughs> there are I mean, it's fun. it's fun. It's fun to have little bits of memorabilia like that yeah. from the bands that you like. And I get that a Stevie Ray Vaughan pick would fetch a bunch of money, even if he hadn't played it. But if this is, you know, was printed for him or was merch that he sold and distributed, like, you know, 250 bucks, it's not the most ridiculous thing in the world. It is still just a piece of plastic, but there's people out there paying way much more money for pieces of plastic that are just like action figures from, you know, movies that are classics and stuff, you know? Why is this piece of plastic different than a piece of plastic that looks like a little man that sits in a spaceship? They're asking for 250 euros, uh, which is, I want to say, close to $300. Well, then it's ridiculous. Um, and all I can think, as I keep looking at it, um, and we you know, made the joke because the person mis- you know in the title called, called it Stevie Ray Vlog, and uh, just switching the A and the U. Yeah, it's very funny. Mm-hmm. Spelling jokes are funny, guys. Uh, but what I was thinking while I was st- staring at this is uh, how there should be a restaurant called Stevie's Ray Vom. And it's, so it's Vaughn, but instead of an N at the end, it's an M and all, and their main item is hams that are coated in sweet baby Ray's barbecue sauce. I think this, what is the word that you said? Stevie Ray, Stevie's Ray (laughs) Vom's Vom's. Yeah. Because it's like Vaughn, but with an M at the end. What's a vom? What's a vom? It's a va ham. It's a va ham. A va ham. Be spelled va ham. I was thinking a uh, super rich Steve could buy this and then scratch out Ray and have it say Stevie Rao <laughs> Vaughn. <laughs> but yeah, that's my pick. <laughs> yeah, this is me. Steve, I think you should change your name. Stevie, St- Steve Rao Vaughn. That's your name now. SRV. <laughs> sponsor? Should we do a Let's sponsor? Do a sponsor. I haven't been keeping timestamps. This is gonna this is gonna be a long ass episode. Um, this first sponsor spot is dedicated to Chase Bliss Audio, mm. makers of guitar raffles. More creative than you are. Oh my gosh! Uh, they just gave away. Was it the one the built mood? Oh great! No, they gave they raffled off. They three. raffled off three. Built moods. Let me pull up the post because I want to read all the sponsors that they sent to. Uh, they raffled off three of these built guitar. They're the brand is built. If you're not familiar with the brand, yeah. B I L T, uh, and they have moods built into them. We uh, we covered those on an episode weeks and weeks back. They raffled them off. Uh, they think they raised around seventy three thousand seven hundred and eighty eight dollars raffling off each one of those, all three of those guitars. So that's what is a, that? That's a, so that's a thing. You just did a thing that I I try to avoid doing at work. You said about. Well, they then said, you gave a very specific number. No, okay, okay, okay. They say in the post we raised at least. That means there might be more money coming in. Yes, they haven't. That's count, different than about. They haven't counted all the money yet. Sorry, Steve. Sorry, my words weren't science ready. Um, but uh, they raised this money for various sponsors. Uh, Friends Who Stutter, Say Org, uh, AIS Stutter, Music Fund, EJ Foundation, Texas Children's, and Autism Oklahoma. So all that money is going to those charities. Good job, Chase Bliss. Good job, Built. That's a, that was a fun giveaway. Great job raising a bunch of money. Those guitars, like, what is that? Like twenty two grand per guitar, or something like that. At least, at least about about. <laughs> uh, head on over to chasebusaudio.com. Get on their mailing list. Check them out on social media. If you're looking for a super versatile uh, delay, go buy a Thermae. Yeah, the Thermae is an amazing delay. So for pedals more creative than you are, and better looking, and more charitable. <laughs> <laughs> check out chase bliss audio next ad what's new man oh what's, you got new? Any what's new i feel like the opening topic was what's yeah, well, new for was me what's new for you uh the garage has a leak it rained the other day it has two leaks it's not anywhere 
here around the gear. It's over by the garage door okay. uh, because we have like a, a a balcony that goes over part of the garage. Oh yeah, yeah. And famously, with this model house, the balcony gets leaks that go into the garage. So oh, okay. on Saturday, I'm probably going to have to get up there and start just. You better hurry, man. It's going to jam and jam and cock into every crack I can find on the balcony while the neighbors watch me just jam cock into the balcony. <laughs> <laughs> and try to i might the thing i'm really afraid of is i'm i might have to like cut away drywall uh, here in the garage and i'm not i'm not excited about that to try to like find the source of it you know you have one of those portable speakers right you have one of those portable speakers you can go yeah. up there uh go up there throw on some van halen you can rock out with your cock out oh my gosh go out go out there with my cut off jorts shirtless <laughs> just like Cock in each hand, just just every crack. <laughs> We're not even drinking. <laughs> Play running with the devil on loop. <laughs> running with the devil. <laughs> I was drinking a Gatorade, just open mouth, pouring it on my face. No, man, you got to be drinking Jack Daniels from the bottle. <laughs> I've got cock holsters on the side of my belt and Jack Daniels. And just, go, 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 go. I'm fixing a leak. <laughs> Throw the empty bottles out in the street. Jeez. This is the life I want to live. That sounds beautiful. All right, what's what's new with you, Steve? Oh man, I don't. Oh yeah, so shipping update. Oh yeah, for the Azores. Uh, dun, da, 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 shipping update. Uh, batch number four. So this is basically pedals. Um, I think like you've invoiced 120 through 170 or so. I think you've invoiced me for about twelve hundred dollars in shipping yeah. so far, and uh, we estimated to be about two thousand dollars. So that's there's about eight hundred dollars well, worth of shipping left to do. I today, so I've I've invoiced you for things other than just the the stamps, right? So right, right. Uh, we have a bunch of pedals that are in padded uh, USPS envelopes that I needed that I'll be transferring into uh nylon or the vinyl bag so I, I sure charge you for those i've charged you for um you're the, not charging the, me we're charging the, yeah, yeah you know I, i've sent you in the budget. budget invoice for, right, right. for labels uh because i'm printing all the labels uh this week's invoice included ink uh i blew through an ink cartridge which unfortunately means of the uh i think 59 pedals that I was that I've bought shipping for. I was only able to ship 37 of them. Oh bummer. Because the last 12 labels didn't print. I'm getting should be getting ink tomorrow. So I'll get those. I'll take another batch home. I'll get that all done. But that oh man. So my printer um for all of a sudden I think my labels have like a curve in them. So uh my printer won't, doesn't want to grab one label at a time. Usually I've been able to print off like 30 sheets of labels, which is about 60 labels. No problem. Just bam, 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 bam. Maybe it grabs like one extra sheet in there. So I have to reprint like maybe two or three sheets. Now what it's doing is it's grabbing with one, grabbing two. It's like grabbing the first sheet, second sheet, and then grabbing like six sheets oh, and man. jamming. And then after I clear the jam, it restarts at like the very first sheet. So it's trying to reprint the first label. I don't know why my printer is doing this weird thing. So last night I start trying to print this stuff out pretty late. I was up until three in the morning last oh God, night working Steve. on this uh, because I wanted to get it done because we fell behind schedule. We were all kind of sick last week. And, um, and so on top of that, I'm like, oh, not a problem. I'm doing all this. And then this label thing hit. So I've now I've got to, I can only print two sheets at a time. And, um, so that's frustrating cause it should be going a lot faster than it is. And then I, I finally got my flow going. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. And then they start printing out like faded, basically great. Like it's, uh. it's not even like the old thing where they would print out faded. It's do it's doing the thing where it's just printing out. Like it's printing out like a line that's good. And then it skips like two inches of ink and then another oh, great. <laughs> I'm like, if it's faded, like maybe I could 
take chances. But at this point, I'm like, you can't, there's nothing here. Yeah. And I, then I went and thought about the number of labels that I threw away because they were misprints because of the jams. I was like, yep, I, I would have been able to get through this batch. Oh, so anyway, bummer. more pedals going out. Uh, I definitely don't think I'm going to finish this by the end of the year, but that's okay. It'll be close. It'll be close. It'll be close. Uh, every, you know, it feels like once or twice a week we get someone emailing us like, hey, you read my name. I haven't gotten anything. And we're like, it's on its way. We promise. Yeah. And, you know, still everyone out there who might have sent us money either in the envelopes or across PayPal, when we open all the envelopes, we will be returning any cash or checks that you sent with a sticker or, you know, some other stuff that we might have around. Um, everyone that sent PayPal because they were hoping to get a pedal and hoping to cover your shipping costs, um, hit us up if you don't think you're getting one because you didn't hear your name in the giveaway video and we will refund you. Just email us and we will take care of you. So thank well, you. Thank you anyways for trying to help. You know, one other thing, I bought a Keurig and apparently that wasn't very super rich Steve of me. So apologies. <laughs> Someone told me to give you trouble about that. Yeah. Like, I don't care about coffee. Yeah, that's why I said I was like, all. I was like, Ryan doesn't even know what Keurigs are. No, I know they're the little cups, and you put it in a thing, and it juices the cup and mixes it with water. They're or real. Right? They're apparently they're supposed to be very bad for the environment. Oh, like, yeah, they're little yeah. plastic cups. Like I actually, we I've used them when I get like when I'm doing planting, uh, like I all of my pots because I want to conserve soil. You have like two or three layers of the K cups in them. Oh, okay. Like so, because it's like a deep pot like this, you, use but it you like really only need like that much dirt. So yeah. I fill up like the bottom like six inches or so with K cups. My wife does that with pool noodles. Oh, yeah. She cuts up pool like old pool noodles that the kids have That's ravaged cool. and yeah. puts them in the bottom of pots. Next sponsor. Next sponsor. Big ear pedals. That's right. Big 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 big. big. <laughs> Head on over to uh, Grant and Karen over at Bigger Pedals, big fans of the show. And we're big fans of them. Mm -hmm. uh, they make the Albi. Big ear, big fans. They make the Albi. They make the L. The woodcutter. The woodcutter, which is a, you know, it's I legitimately my favorite rat pedal that there is. Uh, the loaf. The loaf, the low AF. Uh, the Bettys. The, yeah, the, the Black Betty and the Betty White. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The Albi. I already said that. Say they do again. make the it's Albi though. Again. I have the Albi on my uh, on my church board right now. Oh, nice! I've been using it. So head on over to BigEarPedals.com. Get on their mailing list. I actually wanted to mention it. it's, it's all packed up right now. You can't see oh, okay. it, but I, I have my little mini Dunlop volume pedal. Yeah, and the Albi is right above it like that, mm -hmm. and so I'll do swells with the volume pedal, and then. I forget which setting I have the Albi on, but like when you do uh, the super kneel mode, mm -hmm. it does a super long trail off of it. So I'll do a swell with the volume pedal, and then I'll I'll press the uh, the button on the Albi to turn it on, and then engage the super kneel mode to have a really long trailing reverb after oh, it. So that's been my trick lately with the Albi on my pedal board. All right, follow them on social media. Click yeah. the link down below. Tell them that we sent you. All right, let's do these last two ads and then get the heck out of this here. This ad was sent by Paul Weller. It's a gold Bronco. Gold Bronco. Uh, it, well, it's been rebranded to make you think it's a, a Sean, a Sean yeah, Field? Sean Feld. Sean Feld? Uh, I don't know. Oh, that re Sean Feld reminds me. I need to watch the Hawkeye. Sean Feld Hawkeye. Music Master Gold Sparkle. I watched it last night. I think it's... I think I think it's one of the better Marvel shows so I, far. I, we should talk about that on a future episode because sure, I sure. have thoughts. Well, we shouldn't do next week because we'll be pretty far behind. But so, anyways, uh, this is clearly a refinished Squire Bronco base. Yep. Uh, but they want four hundred dollars for it, down from four fifty. Mm -hmm. In a lot of ways, I feel like that's fair. In other ways, not so much. I mean, the Bronco bases go for like 150 new, right? They're not expensive. Yeah, yeah maybe not. 199. So you are up paying for a finish on this. If it didn't have the racing stripe, and I know that sounds like sacrilege right now, if it didn't have the black racing stripe, I feel like 400 wouldn't be too ridiculous because it's it's close to being a really fun gold sparkle finish that they did on this 
and I like the combination of the perloid pick guard with the white uh, covered mm-hmm. pickup. Mm-hmm. But that racing stripe. The racing stripe's bad. It like, does, it's not even like the same kind of paint. It looks like roofing tar. <laughs> yeah. Like what? How did they even get it on to look like that? Like I don't understand how they did that. Like I, I've done, you know, like faux racing stripes or like yeah. sloppy racing sli- stripes on purpose, and they didn't look anywhere near as bad as that. Like it's it's a shame because it's so close to looking really really cool. This is one step away from just being black duct tape. And like black, it would be did better. You, it would be better if it was black duct tape because then you could remove it. <laughs> black duct tape. I think if you just took a strip of black duct tape and two strips of uh, electrical tape, it would look better than this. Yeah, I mean, it's you know, I often say my refinishes look good from about ten feet away. I think you need to be about fifteen or twenty on this one. I really wonder if the gold finish, I mean, the gold finish looks pretty good. It, looks, it doesn't look factory. Like you can see some pitting on the, yeah, the lower horn, yeah. which is what happens when you do a home glitter job. I should know I've done too many of them and they all turn out about like this. I will say like, I understand, you know, having done these myself, I understand him wanting to charge 450 or 400 because that finish it had to be a pain in the ass for him to pull off. It had to be pain in the ass. And you can see all the orange peel on the headstock close up. I'm not even lo- lo- noticing that. I'm noticing they didn't pull the ferrules. For oh, the, did he paint for the over the They're just painted over. <laughs> oh my gosh, you're right. Yikes. Oh no. Yeah. I'm sorry. He can't he can't charge anywhere close to 400 on this. Yeah. That's bad. They might as well paint it over part of a nut if you're doing that slop. You can just pull those out. Paint my nuts. You can just tap those out. Like they spent more time like layering clear coat on this than they did, you know, taking it apart to 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 spray yeah, it. Yeah. It's weird. Yikes. I do like that look though. And like yeah. if it, if it, if Squire, if Squire put out a limited edition like Chicago Music Exchange or Sweetwater or Guitar Center, whoever, Toman, put out a limited colorway of a Bronco bass in gold sparkle like this with a black racing stripe done well. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like, it would fly off the shelves. People would want this. Like, this is a really classy idea, but man, the execution is too rough. As a bass boy, Steve, what do you think? I, you know, when you look at the picture of like the ad with the dis- with the name on everything, so it's the full body, it, it looks good. You, even from there, you could tell the rating stripe is a little rough, but like it looks more like bleed. And and for like a home job, I can the bleeding is it's not great. There's nothing like, wrong with this guitar if you keep it. The moment you try to sell it, you're open to criticism. Yeah. <laughs> if you yeah. do this for your for your band. For your home project, it's like, whoa, cool! You took a hundred and fifty dollar uh, bass guitar, one hundred ninety nine dollar bass guitar, how much? However much they cost these days, and you made it your own. It looks great from you know from the audience. It looks cool. Good job. The moment you try to sell it at an upcharge, like you're gonna raise eyebrows in the wrong way. Yeah, I you know the the details. Like you said, if there was no racing stripe on it, then you could probably do four hundred, even with the paint over the. Barrels, I think that's weird. You but could like, get in there with a razor and cut them free and tap yeah. them out and put and replace the ferrules. Set them free. <laughs> but then you're doing work to to salvage this thing, you know. Yeah. Pass. Pass. Uh this bye, is, bye, bye. That makes this a part of the show where we say thank you for joining us at the five dollar level to Joey Looney. Uh, who has joined us on Patreon. If you want to help support the show, you can head on over to patreon.com slash 60 cycle homecast where for as little as a dollar a month, you can put, just encourage us to keep making stupid stuff. Are you okay? Are you having a stroke right now? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, we love, you know, everyone who supports us through Patreon, whether you support for one month, 
300 months, the rest of your life, however long you want to do it, 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 it means the same to us. Uh, we use that money to pay the bills around here to cover costs of 300 months is like 30 years of producing the show and covering travel costs and shipping costs and things like that. Steve and I do take a little bit out of, out of there for ourselves to cover our time costs doing the show. But the vast majority of the money is going into the actual costs associated with running the show. And when we get more money in there than we need, it, you know, gives way to cool giveaways and, you know, fun concepts that we want to do and fun trips that we'll get content out of and stuff like that. So thanks to everyone who believes in this channel and the show enough to financially support us. It means a lot to us. This is an ad that I found locally on our Craigslist. Price increase due to inflation. Buy your guitar before the prices go up again. What you pay today will seem like nothing by next year. This incredible limited production, Les Paul, was made in 2002. The limited colors uh, were made from 2002 to 2004 in red, blue, green, copper, and this one, canary yellow, with black sides and back inspiring the, oh, and back inspiring the custom shop Tack Matsumoto model. Gloss finish. Apparently, 200 of each color were made for three years. Um, so uh, these are. Way beyond the usual studio quality, uh, one piece mahogany body and neck, no weight relief with maple cap, uh, just like the Les Paul standard, which is which is true. That is a description of a studio. I don't know what how that makes it. Steve, a, you want to tell us the exact model number of the pickups? It's probably a 490, 498 set. <laughs> I still hate that you know all those numbers. Uh, custom finish with rolled edge fretboards, beautiful 1959 shaped necks, ebony, affin whatever, Fretboard, fretboard stuff. Basically, okay, okay, basically right. a Les Paul custom without the inlays and filigree that can interrupt tonal flow. Th <laughs> filigree that is there. A, is there a school of thought that if you have trapezoid inlays on your uh, Les Paul and like binding that it's interrupting the tonal flow of the wood? <laughs> I'm sure so. You know, as as you know, our good buddy Paul Reed Smith says, you know, guitar is a subtractive instrument. Everything that you add to a guitar subtracts something out of the sound out of it, uh, which is why he takes wood out of his fretboards to put birds into it. Like, yeah. what do the birds subtract, Paul? <laughs> so, you know, maybe there is a point to be made. Uh, personally, like, on that front, like, I find that with Jazz Masters and even Jaguars, mm-hmm, do Jaguars have this? Like, I, I prefer the non-binding versions. Right. Like, I don't like the versions that have binding around the neck. There's something about the non-binding versions that connect to my hand better. So I can I can get behind that. Like, I don't necessarily want a guitar that's, you know, chock full of binding and inlays and stuff like that because it does feel different to me. This guitar looks handsome to me. Yeah. Not $1,650. For my personal budget, I don't know if that's what they go for. If they do, that's fine. That's, that's what I'm trying to find out. I'm, but I'm, the thing that grabbed my attention <laughs> with this ad, like the guitar looks cool. And it's it's cool that it's a limited colorway. The last picture, or actually it's like the fifth picture in this ad, mm -hmm. is this guy, this this older gentleman, this distinguished gentleman, sitting in a, a lawn chair with a yellow bandana on his head he's wearing a yellow shirt he has a yellow pickup truck behind him and a yellow house and various other yellow things happening around him and his shirt says the famous yellow man the, is this guy is this the guy who owns it i don't know like i kind of want to go kick the tires on this guitar just to meet this guy <laughs> it's the famous yellow man i've never heard of him but now i can't stop thinking about him like, how did he become the famous yellow man? Is it just because he has a yellow house and a yellow truck? And so he had to buy this yellow guitar? Again, I don't really know. And if he is so, like, if he is so famous for being the yellow man, why would he ever sell this? Like, if anyone <laughs> needs to have this guitar, it is the famous yellow man. Oh, interesting. According to this one I found on uh, Reverb, it's actually a 490, 490 set. This one was sold, I don't know how long ago, but it was up, oh, three years ago in Australia for $1,200. I think 1650s. It sounds a little steep. 
I don't know. I think it's potentially the right price. I do kind of like that it doesn't have inlays. I actually like that look. There's not even fret dots. Yeah. Yeah. It's got to have fret dots on the side of the fretboard, which is honestly what I visually track with is the dots on the side. I don't care if the actual top of the fretboard has dots. I think it's, if, if I got this guitar, I would probably uh, mix up the hardware to not be all black. Mm -hmm. Like I think mm -hmm. white, a white open coil humbucker in the bridge and a, a chrome covered humbucker in the neck. Would look really great on this. Yeah, this this guitar and, and uh, maybe maybe a a, a chrome metallic pickguard or something. Right. I don't know. You know who I'd want to see give feedback on this guitar? Maybe he might may have already had maybe one of the other colors is uh is Trogly. Oh. I feel like he would know about this. Um, that I would tune in for that episode. I don't watch most Trogly stuff, but if he covered this, I would jump. I would yeah. jump in for that. I I kind of feel like so. The thing is, is the current uh, Les Paul Studio is um is sixteen hundred dollars. You know, for a brand new one. So that's why I'm kind of thinking like is two thousand two to two thousand four good years for. I don't know, but because this it's kind of like maybe because this is a limited run. Excuse me. Uh, this is worth a little more. Uh, it, it's hard to say. It, it almost. Fe I, I don't know that there's necessarily a collector's market. It's for nearly this. a twenty-year-old guitar, and that's the other problem with it is I don't know that there's a collector's market at two hundred. Two hundred might be like um, too small of a number. Sure. So there's there's a whole thing with uh, there's not enough of them for them to be collectible yeah where you know and where that happens it, it's like kind of an old uh card collectors thing where it's mm -hmm. like if a if a print run was done with an error but they only printed like a hundred of them maybe not worth that much it also depends on the air on, on sure what the air on the card was but anyway I, I don't know i think 1650 is at least like a decent starting place i think this I would think definitely sell for yeah. more than 1200 i think it's in the in the realm of reality it's outside of my reality. I'll, I'll say that. Well, that doesn't mean anything. You know, the, you know, the, there's people who jump on video comments all the time. Like, Oh, I would never pay that. It's like, then, then don't, that's your budget. That's yeah. fine. But that doesn't mean that it's like this, not what this is worth. Like, you know, it probably is worth somewhere in that neighborhood. It's just, you know what? If there was a firefly, that color, <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what there I deserve in my life. There you you know? <laughs> Honestly, if there was an Epiphone, like a four hundred five hundred dollar Epiphone, uh, in that colorway, like it would be tempting. I think there is, but the problem is, is you're not going to find one with uh without the, the fret dots, the blank, yeah, neck. All right, tell us about the song. Uh, can you plug it in? This song was sent by Philip Laclede. He says, "Here's another song inspired by a long running joke in a certain subreddit." As always, I enjoy the show. Thanks for all you guys do. This song is called Blues. I wonder what subreddit. Oh. Is there a subreddit where they talk about blues? Yeah, most of them. <laughs> well, most of the guitar subreddits. <laughs>
Jimmy Hantrix in the house. Boyfriend is gonna love that. Who? <laughs> Steve, <laughs> I'm on the subreddit. Steve is not. Uh, who do you think the main influence is on that, Steve? Do you think that's uh, mostly Jimmy Hantrix or you think that's Eric Clapton? Oh, definitely Eric Clapton. <laughs> T O A N, right? Yeah, I was waiting yeah. for the. I was waiting for the uh, St Stevie Ray Rumham. <laughs> Oh man, what, su what, kinda, what subreddit is that from, Ryan? Uh, I'm assuming it's uh, a it's Guitar like Circle Jerk. Guitar Circle Jerk, yeah. Which I've been That's spending a bunch of time on because I love it there. They're my people. That's the kind of humor that I like. Um, <laughs> you know, it for being kind of a joke. I'm assuming it had a groove to it. I kind of felt like there was a lot of opportunity for some sort of like vocal hook. Yeah. That needed to come in that, that like almost perfectly matched the melody of the riff that would make it, you know, an extra level of irritating. <laughs> like it's, there's no part of it that was irritating, mm. but the fact that it was so repetitive. Yeah. I feel like it's part of the joke on being the blues, you know, B L O O O Z. You know, we got some slow hand blues there. The thing I really appreciated about it, it was it didn't feel too technical. It had to, it, you know, had a lot of feel to it. You know, yeah, yeah good feel. All right, you guys are nuts. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Stay grounded. <laughs>